Hey everybody, I am super excited for this first recipe. I'm going to be talking about the show for most of the video. So if you want the info as well as the recipe, be sure to check out that blog post on my website, thetheaterbaker.com. Now, without further ado, today I will be making sticky buns aka the Into the Woods recipe. Um, so a little bit about my background with Into the Woods. I have loved this show for such a long time. I am a huge fairy tale girly and I have vivid memories of watching the DVD of the original Broadway cast when I was a little girl just over and over and over and I just got to see it live for the first time at the end of April. Um, my parents came into town and I got to see the Broadway tour here in Chicago. It was so good. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but first let's get into some basic information about the show. So according to Musical Theater International, the company that holds the rights for Into the Woods, the story follows a baker and his wife who wish to have a child, Cinderella, who wishes to attend the King's Festival, and Jack, who wishes his cow would give milk. When the baker and his wife learn that they cannot have a child because of a witch's curse, the two set off on a journey to break the curse. Everyone's wish is granted, but the consequences of their actions return to haunt them later with disastrous results. Yeah, so basically it's, it's an interwoven mass fairy tale where Sondheim took Rapunzel, Cinderella, Jack and the Beanstalk, Little Red Riding Hood, and then he invents the baker and his wife to tie them all together. Now the original production opened on November 5th, 1987, starring Robert Westenberg, Kim Crosby, Bernadette Peters, Joanna Gleason, Chip Zion, Tom Aldredge, and Danielle Furland. That sounds like a lot of people to star in a show, and well, it kind of is, but Into the Woods is an ensemble show, and from the narrator down to the steward, every actor is constantly adding another strand into Sondheim's tapestry of interwoven fairy tales. You might also be thinking, a lot of those names sound very familiar. And for a lot of Broadway fans, they are. I mean, Bernadette Peters, who plays the witch, has been in so many things. Recently, she's been on Mozart in the Jungle. She was in Hello, Dolly as a replacement. She was on a couple episodes of Smash as Ivy's mother. A little bit further back, she was in Song and Dance by Andrew Lloyd Webber. She was in another Sondheim show, Sunday in the Park with George. She was in the 1982 Annie movie, which I also watched a lot. Uh, she was in a revival of Gypsy as Mama Rose. I mean, she is a true Broadway diva and a true queen. If you're a fan of the Secret Garden musical like I am, that's where you'll have heard Robert Westenberg before. In Into the Woods, he plays Cinderella's Prince and the Wolf. And in the Secret Garden, he played Neville Craven, Archibald's brother. Um, he is currently teaching at Missouri State. He is the head of the musical theater department. And something I think is very sweet. His wife is Kim Crosby, who played Cinderella. She's also been quite busy since starring in this on Broadway. She's been on the national tour of Peter Pan as Mrs. Darling. She played Mary in the Librarian. She returned to Into the Woods, this time to play the baker's wife, and she's also been in Hello, Dolly! fairly recently. Chip Zion was in Falsettos and A New Brain, both of which are by William Finn, and more recently he was on Broadway in It Should Have Been You. He's also returned to Into the Woods to play the Mysterious Man, which, going from son role to father role, I think is super cute and kind of a full circle moment. Joanna Gleason has also been in so many things. Uh, she was on Friends, she's been on The West Wing, she was in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and just so many other things. The last one I'll touch on is Danielle Furland. She was in A Year with Frog and Toad as one of the birds. If you don't know what A Year with Frog and Toad is, it's a very cute children's musical. I grew up listening to the soundtrack, so I am highly familiar with her voice. Back to the original production itself, it closed on September 3rd, 1989 after 765 performances. 
It won three Tony Awards, which, considering it was up against Phantom of the Opera, which was a phenomenon, it did pretty darn well, and all of these Tonys are very well deserved. It won Best Score, Best Book, and Best Actress in a Musical for Joanna Gleason. There have been so many revivals and other productions, and a ton of well-known names have been in it, like Amy Adams played the baker's wife, Hannah Waddingham played the witch, she's on Ted Lasso as Rebecca, if that name sounds vaguely familiar, Imelda Staunton was in the original London production as the baker's wife, Laura Benanti was in the first Broadway revival, Dame Judi Dench has even been the voice of the giant's wife. And moving into, like, smaller communities, I know at least two nearby schools did it while I was in high school. And I've been in it. I haven't seen it, but I've been in it. Well, I was in the junior version, which is just the first act. But I was a great Jack's mother as an eighth grader. Anyway, fast forward to the tour slash second Broadway revival. It opened on August 6th, 2022 and ran until January 8th, 2023 with Sarah Bareilles as the baker's wife, Gavin Creel as Cinderella's prince and the wolf, Joshua Henry as Rapunzel's prince, Brian Darcy James as the baker, Patina Miller as the witch, Philippa Sue as Cinderella, Julia Lester as Little Red, Cole Thompson as Jack, Amy Garcia as Jack's mother, Nancy Opal as Cinderella's stepmother, Tanika Gibson as Lucinda, Brooke Ishibashi as Florinda, Kennedy Kanagawa as Milky White, and Alicia Velez as Rapunzel. Now that's a lot of names, and I'm sure if you are a Broadway fan, you recognize a lot of them. For quite a few, however, it was their Broadway debut, which is super exciting. Now, Opal, Gibson, Ishibashi, Garcia, Thompson, Velez, Creel, and Kanagawa are still on tour, so I got to see them, and oh my gosh, it was so exciting. The rest of the tour cast is Montego Glover as the witch, Stephanie J. Block as the baker's wife, Sebastian Arcellus as the baker, which is super cute because they're married in real life, Katie Garrity as Little Red, Diane Phelan as Cinderella, and Jason Forbach as Rapunzel's prince. Oh my gosh, this was so good. Again, the only frame of reference I have is the DVD recording, and while I absolutely love that recording, it was really cool to see the show from a new perspective. Stephanie J. Block was out for what we later found out was a vocal injury, so we got to see her understudy, Simone Rose, as the baker's wife. And I am so happy we went the night we did, because if you follow either of them on social media, this was the night where Phelan and Rose fumbled the golden slipper and it fell into the pit. The audience cracked up and both actors handled it so well. They laughed it off and then continued on with the show. And this made the line where the baker's wife says, I only need one slipper, so much funnier. It was incredible. Anyway, looking at the design of the show, I appreciated how naked it seemed. I mean, originally it was staged for Lincoln Center, so the orchestra was on stage, and I loved that there were very few set pieces. I think it really put the focus on the storytelling in a way that seeing these like remote control hills kind of go on and off stage like they do in the original production doesn't. And I also can't imagine that the lack of permanent set pieces hurt for packing slash travel purposes, which is just the nature of a touring production. I loved all of the puppetry work that was used. I mean, normally Milky White is either a person in a cow costume or it's just a fake cow that they put on stage. But it was really cool to have Milky White have a personality and react to what was happening around her. Kanagawa was so funny. I loved having a full fleshed out Milky White. I also loved getting to have a visual representation of the giant's wife. There were two giant puppet boots and compared to just hearing her voice, it was so cool to actually see where she was on the stage. All in all, the actors were incredible and while I know the show well, I was constantly surprised with choices they were making. The set was incredible. The orchestra was so good. It was just incredible. 
Now, a little bit about why I picked this specific recipe. I have never made sticky buns before, and while I've made a ton of bread, I mean, during the pandemic, didn't we all? So this was a really fun challenge. I will definitely be making them again. And as for how it's connected to Into the Woods, Little Red comes into the baker's shop and asks him and his wife for perhaps a sticky bun or four. And I definitely ate four. This recipe is so delicious. You can find it on my website, thetheaterbaker.com, with pictures that you can follow along with. And until next week, that's curtains. Happy baking!